Hi, I'm Kate Rose. I'm your host today on 21st Century Healthcare Consultants podcast, Home Care Today. It's important to us here at our podcast that we're able to share information with you all that is relevant, helpful, and hopefully something that maybe you haven't heard before. I'm looking forward to our guest today. We're going to have a chance to talk to Ethan Schwarzbach, who is the CEO and co-founder of FlyChain. And as I was sharing with Ethan just a few minutes before we got started, I'm not familiar with a lot of what goes on in the industry. It's not my field personally, but I always look forward to hosting our podcast because I get to learn. I get to experience through our guests that the things that we're doing here at 21st Century and the partnerships that we have with other companies such as FlyChain gives me the opportunity to see how we can work together in this community in order to make home care a better, safer, and more um, exhilarating environment, not just for the on-site workers, but also for the background staff that supports the work in the field. So with all of that said, Ethan, I am glad that you're here. Welcome to our podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. Excited to be here. I'm going to just ask you straight out of the gate, what is FlyChain? So FlyChain uh, is what we call the financial operating system for the home health, home care industry. Um, we started this business over two years ago, really with the desire to help home health agencies get access to fairly priced capital. Um, they have a lot of cash flow issues that we kind of solve, and our backgrounds at FlyChain are really all in the traditional lending and, and finance or financial technology space. Um, and we wanted to build a company to address some of those material cash flow issues, as well as institutionalize really that financial back office. So we mm. then uh, we build accounting and bookkeeping specific to healthcare. You know, in our universe, we'll see insurance claim reconciliation causing a lot of issues as it relates to bookkeeping. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, the multi-location nature of a lot of home health and home care agencies. Um, usually, as they expand, it's it's you know opening up a new flag, a new right. new geographic location, and so you know having multi-location entities, having that all reconciled to the top, and then once we're powering your books, uh, the whole notion is we can rely on that financial data. So we'll start to benchmark you against the industry. We'll show you a valuation of your business, where you are today how to improve that valuation. Mm -hmm. We've actually built uh, rocket money for your business, if you're familiar with that. So we're actually looking at all of the spend that you are um, effectively you know, running through your business and we'll wow. flat redundant spend, get you vendor discounts. Uh, and recently we launched a treasury management solution. So usually mm -hmm. what we see on that front is, you know, we want to be there you know, at FlyChain, no matter where you are in your journey. If you're early days, usually you don't have a whole lot of money in your bank account. We're there to lend mm -hmm. and provide you that working capital. And fortunately, many of our customers that we've worked with now have pretty good cash balances and are, mm -hmm. are profitable. And so we want to optimize the return on that idle cash. And now you can kind of generate a five, six percent return on that. So Regardless of where you are in our in your journey, uh, we want to be there supporting you uh, from a financial and technology infrastructure perspective. Wow, that is impressive. You know, we we think a lot about, or I think a lot about, the importance and the value of the work that's done in the field to help take care of people who need home care. But without a good solid financial foundation and ongoing support financially, it's virtually impossible for home agencies to be able to sustain their performance in the field and not string themselves out so desperately with their finances that, you know, that they can't sleep at night because they're worried about how they're gonna make payroll and so on and so forth. Um, what are the main challenges, would you say, to somebody who's just getting started in the industry as regarding their financial um, aspect? Not having enough equity up front. Uh, mm -hmm. what I mean by that is before you can access debt, so before you can get a, a bank loan, an SBA loan, a loan from FlyChain, mm -hmm. generally you need to show revenue. You need to be in business in some cases for two years. So when you're just starting that journey, a lot of those traditional debt financing options aren't really open to you. And so what we usually see is sort of the, the big misstep might be not planning for that growth, not having that initial outlay of capital, whether that's mm -hmm. the owner's personal money, whether they've taken you know, investments in the form of equity. Um, so generally what we see in our universe is it might take a little while for you to start generating revenue. As if mm -hmm. you're sending to insurance or submitting to insurance, 
you usually have to see a X number of patients for a period of time before you right. actually get reimbursed. And so right. you serve those patients, you need to pay your employees or yourself and, and kind of get through that initial startup phase where you have a lot of expenses and you're not going to actually generate revenue again. And so mm -hmm. really planning, making sure you have, uh, you know, that, that kind of nest egg of equity to get you through to the point where you can then start really generating the revenue. And, and that's where the lights kind of turn on for a lot of additional options down the line. So uh, really that initial equity and kind of planning, do you have enough based on the milestones and things that you need to hit? Does mm -hmm. the capital get you there? And once uh, you kind of get past that, that hump, the whole goal is we can then help you and provide you debt financing so that you're not having to give up uh, more of your company as you grow by taking right. more equity down the line. Right. You, you talk about planning and how important that is. Are there basic steps that someone needs to be taking before they even, before they even officially open their business financially? The, the first is definitely, you know, it, it might sound pretty table stakes, but build a business model, a pro forma. If you don't have, know how to do that, like we can help you. I'm sure 21st is, is, you know, can get involved in there as well, but it really is having a game plan. Cause if you, you kind of start in this universe without a game plan, there are a lot of additional costs. There are a lot of bumps in the road. You know, maybe you are actually able to submit to insurance. Well, what happens if insurance takes a little longer to pay? So you kind of have to understand all the things that can go right, but really planning for the things that are gonna take longer to get across the finish line. Um, and that is what we really try and articulate to our customers is, especially when you're getting started, it's actually much easier to plan once you've kind of gotten started and you have revenue and you know what your costs are. Mm -hmm. um, but at early days, it's really important to, to talk to 21st century, to talk to you know your consultants, to folks like FlyChain, to really understand what you're getting yourself into um, so that you can plan for success and, and know what that equity is that you need to get to, to kind of move the needle in your business. What is, if you, if you were going to pick the top two things that I would, if I'm going to start my business, if you were to tell me the two things that I need to do before I do anything else, and I mean anything else, what would they be? Planning, day one planning, it's it, without a plan, um, it's hard to get equity investment. It's hard to you know convince people to join your company. It's harder to effectively become a profitable business or a business that's gonna be here to stay. So first and foremost is, I, I kind of come back to this over and over, mm -hmm. is understand, and you might not know what those additional costs are uh, in right. terms of getting credentials, getting set up, getting your EIN licenses and all these things. And so mm -hmm. planning is, is number one. The second I would say is, is really around your data and your infrastructure. And once again, this is from kind of the fly chain financial purview. Mm -hmm. uh, but what we mean by that is, you know, we've built, I mentioned accounting and bookkeeping and a whole host of other services. You kind of need to start off with really clean institutional grade books, because if you don't have that, as you want to access private equity or investments or get a bank line down the line, you know, having all of your data in an institutional, easy to read format mm -hmm. opens up a lot of options for you in the relatively near term. So I'd say plan both on the strategy side and then also on the you know financial infrastructure side. So you're able to know exactly how your business is doing at any given uh, point in time. That is such good advice. And I know that it could be easy to want to skip some of those steps because you're excited, you feel like you need to get going and so on and so forth. But what's the old saying that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure? So taking those early steps and making sure that you've got your bases covered before you ever open your doors, that's good advice for sure. Ethan, what are what are some of the what are some of the financial the, the financing um, options that are available to people when they're starting out? So that's why I kind of focused on that equity day one. So the financing options in the small to medium sized business world are actually quite challenging at this point in time. So interest rates just broadly have risen, mm -hmm. credit has tightened. Effectively, what we mean by that is banks really aren't lending much right now, and especially aren't really lending to small folks. And so when you're in business for less than two years, 
you have very, very limited access to debt capital. So right. if there's a line in the sand, business for two years, you need to be in business for two years for the SBA, for most non-bank lenders. And so kind of that's why we're saying really stressing on that equity side, you, you need to have a plan for those first 18 months to two years to make sure that you're able to financially you know, thrive, be a viable business. After those two years, that's when really, you know, things become really interesting. So banks, we always stress to our customers, go to your bank first. If mm -hmm. there's a good chance they won't lend to you, but banks do have the best rates. So we always say right. start here. Um, Fly chain, we power advanced payment on insurance claims. And so if you are submitting to insurance versus the private pay, that's one way that we're able to provide working capital. Instead of mm -hmm. waiting a month or two, we're effectively able to bring that forward. So you're able to maybe hire more people, bring patients off the wait list, grow more organically. Right. Um, there are some other options. We've uh, recently instituted a longer duration line of credit. And in our, in our world in home health, usually expansion is opening a new location at somewhere. And so you know, a longer duration line of credit 9, 12, 18 month payback period, we'll see these folks leverage that when they want to open a new location, mm -hmm. takes a while to get that new location staffed up and generating revenue. So the whole goal here at FlyChain is, you know, kind of fitting a lid for every pot mm -hmm. where you are in your capital journey. So where we really stress in that sub two years business, and I know 21st century consultants obviously works with, you know, those, those newer agencies, um, advanced payment on claims is a great option. There are some revenue-based financing options out there. Just rest assured you are a fundable business. It's just not might be through a bank. Uh, and so one thing that we really like to stress at FlyChain is we're here to lend in the kind of the lowest rate possible to really benefit the customers. Um, so yeah, it's really just planning. And, and those are kind of the options out there. And, and the last, which is probably a little bit down the line for some of the customers would be acquisition finance. Like we see a lot of our customers looking to expand, maybe in a different state. And so we can help you support, you know, the acquisition of, of another company for expansion as well. So Day one, you know, we can do some of that really short-term financing, even if you are under two years in business. Mm -hmm. uh, but really, after two, the world opens up for you uh, in terms of our financial system. So uh, two things you just mentioned. First of all, you are, I know you're, you're located in New York. Is that correct? Yep. Yep. New York City. But your clients are all over the country? We have customers in nearly all 50 states. There are a few like North Dakota. We don't have any uh, <laughs> just probably because of population, but not yet, not yet. Um, yeah. yeah, but we are in all 50 states and it's been pretty interesting to see how candidly different states are operating very differently. And so mm. our, our platform and, and what we're trying to do is kind of standardize that operational and financial data set uh, and infrastructure to really help all of our customers succeed. Is it fair to say that a customer can come to FlyChain at the very beginning, I mean, even in the infancy of their business, and your services and support is there to carry them all the way through, whether they end up, uh, if they're acquired by somebody else or if they stay with it for the long haul themselves, you can carry them from start to finish. Is that correct? That's that's really the goal. What, what we've built here with this suite of products and services that, mm -hmm. you know, are, are basically the building blocks of our platform. If you're just getting started, you know, we have the institutional grade accounting, bookkeeping, valuation, savings, all of the things that, you know, the large orgs in our space definitely have, mm -hmm. um, that to the smaller folks. So kind of no matter where that pendulum swings, if our businesses want to remain independent, our goal is to bring you those same institutional grade tools to the smaller folks so that they can thrive and remain independent. Mm -hmm. If you are looking to you know, get acquired or retire at some point in time, there's a bunch of different flavors of you know, selling your business. Um, we wanna make sure that you're gonna have the best outcome there. So part of that valuations by running your books, we're looking at all of those pieces of data and constantly showing you, hey, here's how you stack up against the industry. Here are ways to improve that margin by reducing this cost or, you know, increasing your margin by optimizing treasury. There are a lot of moving parts in here. And, and candidly, many of our customers actually are aware that they can be doing a lot better. Uh, and so that's our mission is, you know, either remain independent or help you get that optimal uh, valuation with no surprises at the end of the road as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Can you think of a particular client or even if it's a, an avatar of sorts where you started working with someone and you've had a chance to build a relationship with them and you now have the, um, the pleasure of being able to say that we were with them in the beginning and this has sort of been their success story so far? Yeah, absolutely. And I'll kind of go back to where we started our business was really lending. And we still do that today and have since built this entire suite of services. So call it two and a half years ago when we started lending to our first couple of home health customers, mm -hmm. uh, happy to report that, you know, we were able to help them grow. You know, our goal here is generally what we're seeing is we're, you know, lending money. They're leveraging that money to take patients off the wait list. There's such a high demand for services in our, our universe. And so what we typ typically see is we, we trickle that money forward. They use that money, maybe hire one more person, pay existing mm -hmm. for hours. Patients come off the wait list, they grow. And so sort of the, the pleasure that we've had is seeing call these five, I'll, I'll kind of point to five customers in the home health space that we've lent you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars to individually. And now happy to report they're kind of past that hump and they now have very hefty cash balances. And so just to kind of give you a, a flavor of how we support those businesses, we've since onboarded them. We now run their books. We now mm. kind of give them, turn the lights on to their business. I mentioned that treasury solution. When we first started lending to those five that I've sort of soft circled in my head, they didn't have any money in their bank account. That's why they were borrowing. Well, right. well, they built a nice cash balance. And so they're now using all of our products and they've put a collective $1 million across those five customers in our treasury mm -hmm. solution. And now they're earning 5.5% on that idle cash versus the 0.5% that they were making. So once again, I think that's a really good example of how we can start by lending. We understand the business. We understand the nuances of the home health universe, this crazy cash flow paradigm where you have to mm -hmm. pay employees. If you're submitting to insurance, you don't realize that money for some time. So right. by taking a really kind of vertical specific approach to home health, um, we've been able to build these solutions that really resonate with our end customers and, and help them really improve their margins across the board is our, our mission here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it strikes me as such an important part of what you do that you are specific to the home care, the home health care aid um, world, because just like any other industry, it has its specialties, its nuances, its challenges, and so on and so forth. Um, in the last couple of minutes that we have, tell me just a little bit about how you actually ended up in this space. So I kind of mentioned all of our backgrounds uh, at the Fly Chain team mm -hmm. are really finance and fintech, lending, accounting. Um, I actually helped Square, the payments company launched Square Capital. Some of the kind of initial kernels of Fly Chain were born out of that by looking mm -hmm. at billing data to then kind of use that data to then be able to lend. But while we were in healthcare, um, my father was actually a dentist and I moved home during the pandemic. Uh, I filled out his paycheck protection program application uh -huh. and you need finances to do that. And he really didn't have any. And so I kind of had to reverse engineer, go into his tax, you know, his, his tax returns. Um, simultaneously, he was retiring and selling his practice and oh. he didn't have three years of buttoned up financials. And I kind of rode shotgun to the sale of his practice over a six to eight month kind of nightmare to be. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it can be. Unfortunately, he probably got a 15 to 20% discount on his mm. enterprise value because he didn't have three years of buttoned up financials. And so that's why we're building in healthcare. Um, we often find folks like my dad don't have the financial savviness. They're there because they want to mm -hmm. care for people or hire people to care for people, run a business that is is really uh, where care is the core. Uh, mm -hmm. And so we want to do this so we can help folks, much like my dad, spend more time serving patients, make them financially healthy so that they can actually thrive, grow. That generally leads to better outcomes, better you know care outcomes as well. Mm -hmm. And that's why... We the healthcare space. And I think home health generally too. And, and why we started there, most folks, you know, on our team and in probably our country at this stage have encountered some version of, of home health or home care, right? It is right. close, close to home. It is. We do see, you know, a lot of challenges in this space and why we're playing here. Um, but with challenges often come, you know, really interesting opportunities. And so that's why we've rolled up our sleeves and are really excited about this partnership with 21st, serving the existing customers that we have and um, really just feel feel uh, 
great about doing what we're doing. We don't have the ability to care, but what we do do is, you know, take a lot of the financial burden, things that keep our business owners up at night off of their plate so that they right. can financially succeed today, tomorrow, well down the line. And, you know, in closing, that is so important. And I hear this over and over and over again. And it's not just in the healthcare industry. It's in any industry. But know what your strengths are and play to those. But also be humble enough and honest enough with yourself to know what your weaknesses are or your less than strengths are and get the help that you need. Surround yourself with people who know what they're doing when you don't so that collectively you've got this incredible team that's rock solid and you've got all of your bases covered. So while it might be difficult in the beginning to swallow the spend to bring somebody else on board, whether it's Fly Chain 21st or anybody else, in order to solidify that team and make sure that what you're shooting at, you're gonna have the power to get there because you've got the people doing the work with you in order to make it possible. So I really appreciate you sharing that part of the, um, not just the value that FlyChain brings, but also how important it is in, as part of the planning that you recognize that you need to backfill those spaces in your plan that you're not exactly necessarily the top dog to do yourself. If somebody wanted to get in touch with you, what would be the best way for them to get information about FlyChain? You can visit our website. Uh, it's flychain.us, www.flychain.us. You can email me at any point in time. I will be the one to respond. Um, happy to show you a demo of our platform. You know, I think it, it is designed specifically for this space. And uh, we're just really excited about where we're at, what we've built and sort of the value we've been able to bring to our customers. And I do like, you kind of hit the nail on the head earlier. We, we do really feel like it takes a village to build these types of companies. And right. we think of that village as... The owners, the C-suite management, your employees, that's your internal village. But yeah. there's a lot of other components of, of building a healthcare business. It's finance, it's accounting, it's consulting, you know, clinical ops, all of these things, mm -hmm. you know, there are experts out there for it. And if you don't have that expertise, tap that those folks, because it's generally speaking, well worth your time uh, to invest in that day one. Yep, I absolutely agree with you 100%. Here, um, I just want to tell you, it's been a real pleasure. I, as I've been chatting with you today, I feel your energy. I feel your excitement, your enthusiasm, as well as your expertise. And I hope that our viewers have enjoyed the time that we spent together. And I'd love to have you come back on the show anytime. If there's anything in particular that you are interested in carrying a, a deeper discussion about, just let us know. And to our viewers, thanks for joining us today. Ethan, thanks again. It's been a real pleasure meeting you. I look forward to seeing Thank you again. Everybody else out there, appreciate your time. Stay healthy, stay well, and we'll catch you next time.